So there is the sample data store, right? Uh, so we know how to connect our data now, correct? So uh, let's do that. Or, or let me do it from the scratch itself so that we, we know what are we doing. <clears throat> So what we will do is we will be blending. While we were doing joins, what we did is we connected to data over here. We connected an Excel and we brought this table over here. We got this data source and then we, you know, we, we, we dragged in for the join to happen. But then now we will not do that. What we will do is we will do a we will do a uh, do a blend so <clears throat> let's go over here and let's see how is data getting blended so this is the orders data set uh, with, among the sample superstore data set this is the orders tab in which we have these uh, you know these uh, um, dimensions and measurements. Now let me go back to this. And now let me, uh, we have seen how we view data, right? So let me view the data for people. And let's see that if I want to have a, have a mix between, um, between this, uh, between orders and people, do we have enough data that will uh, help me? <clears throat> so I can see that in people i have region and regional manager being two uh, dimensions present in there so let's see if we have something similar to that so i can see that we have that we have a uh, region being one of the common columns between the two right so <clears throat> let's see how we can blend these two uh, data sources and uh, you know like these are different tables altogether so let's see let's see how we can blend these two so that's how, that's that's my orders and now if i go back to the data source and if i go over here and if i do a new data source new data source excel same sample data store and now i'll drag in people okay so now you see that we have the people data set which is over here now let's go back to the sheet now when i come to the sheet what i see is both the tables have been added in here right both the tables are added. <clears throat> when I go to this, I see this. When I go to this, I see this. <clears throat> and we have seen that, uh, you know, we have a common column of region, which is present in there. So we know that, okay, we can have some kind of a relation and this relation is being decided by Tableau. So data blend is not that flexible like um, like joints because you know joints have left right and they have the unique things coming in and all those factors coming up but blend is basically happening only based on you know one <clears throat> one column being uh, you know being being uh, common between the two so there is no such that's why blending is something which is not a very uh, you know what to say refined form of harmonization it is a very crude form of harmonization um, you have to be dead sure that you know both the columns have all the things in order to get your data together but blending is not um, you know not much recommended between between people who work with data because it is like you know it is heavily prone to errors and uh, you know, it will throw up errors uh, and, and you have to do a robust data quality QA and all those things in order to. 
So no worries. Uh, let's not, uh, you know, let's not uh, go into that. <clears throat> or rather, let me go into that and tell you these things because, uh, like, you know, try to avoid data blending whenever possible. But then this is a feature of Tableau and we need to be aware of it. So definitely, yes. So now, uh, based on a common column, we are doing this. So this is a feature that, and Tableau recognizes these things automatically. So let's see a very short example about this, that orders, let me pull in, uh, say, what should be up? Uh, let me pull in order ID, maybe. Um, no, I mean, let's put in date. We have the date, right? Order date. Yeah, let me pull order date to columns. And let me pull sales to rows. Okay, I see this happening. Now, region is coming from people, right? So let me pull region into colors. So you see, so you see what happens, happens over here is, uh, you know, data gets blended and we have the regions wise year and sales, whereby year and sales is coming from this table and, <coughs> excuse me, and colors, uh, you know, the definition of these uh, of the, or the bifurcation of the data is happening uh, from the region table that is coming from the people step. Now, if you can see, you will see that uh, one data source is in blue and the other data source, as soon as I use from it, is in orange. See over here. So that, what does that mean? That means that, you know, the 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 orders data set is the primary data set which was being worked on and people data set is the secondary data set which is uh, being used to manipulate whatever we are doing from the primary data set so always uh, the primary data set operations will come in blue and the secondary operations uh, you know ticks will come in uh, come in uh, orange Second is this orange also signifies that there is a blend that is happening and there is a data blending that has happened. <clears throat> One more thing that tells that, you know, this is the column which is, which is, uh, which is helping the blending is the, the symbol over here. So it is telling me stop using region as linking field. So region is the linking field between the between the two uh, data sources, right? So if I click on this uh, clip button, what it what it is telling is so based on it, it is connecting. So if you click on that, it will stop uh, linking the two sheets uh, based on this column, and it will stop. So that's that's data blending. So data blending is basically, uh, you know, not much common. I'm not sure how many of you, if you have worked on Tableau uh, before or if you have seen uh, something. So, uh, you know, <coughs> if you have seen people working on data, like, you know, in a robust data engineering field, um, data blending is a very crude form of joining stuff together but then you know no harm in learning so let's 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 do that okay <clears throat> so uh you know uh, what we can uh, so we have now seen that how we do the data blending any any questions guys No, will. Uh, no. I'll consider to be a no. Okay, then let me remove this. Now, the next topic that we will discuss is calculations. Uh, and you will see that there are always calculated uh, calculations are something that we are uh, we are always concerned about and how we how we do the calculations and why do we do the calculations and how does calculations affect things so let's look at calculations how we do calculations and uh, like you know what are 
the various types of calculation <clears throat> i will not teach you calculations like uh, every single formula or anything because that is very self explanatory and you guys are smart enough to go ahead if i show you where the formulas are you can very well go and edit them and you can do so but let me show you a story whereby you know the different types of calculations come into play okay so <clears throat> so calculations come in various forms uh, namely uh, you know arithmetic calculator calculations string calculations uh, uh, basically arithmetic calculations string calculations are the common ones which are used then comes the logical calculations uh, whereby we use the logical functions and statements and then what we will do is we will see uh, two more types of calculations that tableau offers us namely uh, you know table calculations and quick table calculations so these are some of the calculations that we will have a look at and uh, we will see like uh, how we can how we can work towards that okay so before that let me bring in again this call this thing the order data and let me go to the sheet so uh, if i want to you know if i want to uh, over here first thing is um, let me do something uh, let me let me first show you how to take counts and distincts so count and distinct count is basically um, again it's very self explanatory whereby if you have a dimension and if you use a count function uh, what it does it gives you um, you know how many elements of that dimension is present in there and then count distinct basically gives you the unique number of things that are present in there so let's see how count and count distinct works or how they work related to the every like you know related to every dimension that is present in us so let me do something let's uh say it takes state into uh, into the rows and let me have sales in the columns okay so now i have the states and their respective sales correct now <clears throat> let's say tomorrow uh, someone comes up and tells that you know the sales of these states are here but i also want to know the uh you know count of distinct items uh in there so so what will you do so that is that that is your sales figure now uh the distinct items uh, when they want to see uh any time like this is the uh, this is the count of items that we have so what do you do in that case so you would use a so definitely your item means product names products basically product names um, like how much of product is present in all these all these areas or all these states so when you want to do that one way is to put uh, functions and stuff but then tableau provides you with one more feature over here so what you can do is you can go to this product name right click now this click i cannot show you the click but i am clicking right okay so i'm doing a right click and i'm dragging it into the columns so once i do that see normally if i drag a product name over here with left click it will be uh, as good as a dimension right so it is coming as a dimension but if i do a right click and pull it to columns what happens there are few aggregational functions that come up namely minimum maximum count count distinct and attribute okay so what do we need we need count distinct all in this case so okay let me sh show you what is the difference between count and count distinct so let us have count yeah. and then let me pull this guy once more over here and our count distinct so you see see what happens 61 is 61 26 11 so that does mean that 20 in among 26 11 is unique and rest are duplicates 
okay that's 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 pretty uh, self explanatory and this is something that i just wanted to make sure that you understand <coughs> and always you will find the distinct count to be less than or equal to the count okay never will it be more of course it won't be more uh, it can be less than or equal to this thing because this also has duplicates okay so in this case so now we have the distinct count of product name i don't need count so i'll just remove count over here we have this so what happens is aggregation functions once you once you have something you just right click and you can take it up there and you don't need to write a function or you don't need to <coughs> don't need to do uh, these things uh, similarly aggregation functions are available when we right click on a measure as well but that is some uh, you know multiply etc etc clear now next is this uh, you know your stakeholder he wants to see sales per item sold so what is sales per item sold he wants to see that uh, you know uh, can you show me what is the sales per item sold um, calculation so now this field is not present in here so what you need to do is you need to calculate a field okay so to have to get your calculated field options there are two types of ways to get your calculated fields one is above this entire data window you will see view data and then you will see a drop down so you can go and click in your drop down and you will see there is an option called create calculated field okay uh the other way the other way to do is you know you go to say anything any 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 uh, dimension of it do a right click you will see a create and from there as well you can do a create calculated field so there are two ways in which you can create cal get to the field create calculated field and you can use them now the only difference between the both the both the option is that uh in case you are doing a create calculated field on your product id or product name or region or whatever tableau knows that this person is specifically wanting to create a calculated field on region okay so he so tableau understands that this person wants to create a calculated field on the region and the region is one of the dimensions that he is going to use in his calculation so that's why if you pull in calculation calculation like you know if you do a right click and do this you will find that the dimension on which you had right clicked and created a calculated field that automatically appears in here on the other hand on the other hand if we if we see this over here nothing comes up because this drop down wala field doesn't know that which dimension do you want to refer to okay one more feature is this arrow you will find this arrow which is basically a small guide towards all the functions that are available in tableau okay and not only that it also gives you a text beside see there's a text beside performs a logical conjunction on two expressions so you know it gives you a very discreet very 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 small one liner um and also examples one liner stuff for you that um, you know what this means this now if you know that you will understand and you can refer them <coughs> so that's that's basically it now uh, for us what do we need to calculate we need to calculate sales per item so okay so for that what are the fields that we need we definitely need sales and items are product so product names so what do i need as a calculation i need sum of sales divided by item sold item sold is number of item sold so that does mean count of 
product name right product is my items and count of product will give me the number of items so let me write a formula oh okay you can go over here and you can write this as well like you know from here you will get the form so if you use sum what will happen sum and the brackets will come so what do i need to put over here sales so sum of sales divided by count right so i can go over here and i can if i know i can do this else there is this referencing place right so if i do count it will give me all the count related functions okay so what i need is distinct count of product name okay so i have distinct count of product name and the calculation seems to be valid let me apply and Okay, so I have created. Oh, wait, where did I? Ah, calculation one, right? So I have created this. Um, no, I have created this thing called. Let me rename it as well. I thought I will forget. This is sales per item sold. Okay, now sales per item sold comes over here. Okay, cool. Any doubts? Any doubts that come to your mind till now? No, right? I guess no. So now let's do something. Now that we have this uh, coming up, now that we have this uh, over here, what do we do? We now we'll replace the count of product name from here let me remove sales as well and let me put sales per item sold over here okay now you see now once i've done it it gives me what is the sales per item sold numbers are so when you do that what happens is uh, you know, you will see that an aggregated thing comes beside this. You see this? So calculated fields come with an aggregate and their aggregations cannot be changed unless the native metrics where we like, you know, uh, native metrics are something that we change up. So whenever you create a calculated field using measures, there will be this AGG aggregation. So this aggregation will happen and uh, you know, you will see this aggregation happening um, in the text, and 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 this will come up when we have the two measures in a calculated manner. So that's how you write a formula. You create a calculated field and you use it. Okay, so clear. So that's that's basically my first arithmetic calculation that I did. Now. Let's, uh, you know, look at string calculations. Maybe. So in string calculations, like we, what do we want? We want, uh, you know, customer names, say beginning with S. Now we have a range of customers over here. Say suppose, put it here. now we have the customer names. Now we, uh, now from arithmetic calculations, we are moving to string calculations. So we want to see the customer names beginning with S. Now say suppose you are a company who have a range of customer names and you are targeting the ones with an S uh, to give them some, some kind of an offer. Okay. Now it will be difficult if you want to filter, use a filter and then do because uh, say customer name and filters. Now you sit and do manually everything and you go like you know kachak, kachak, you want to use it and you want to do it as a um, as a as a as a, as a as a as a calculated field whereby you want to do all these things this is going to be like uberly difficult for you right so rather than that what do you do is i'm sorry 
rather than that what you can do is uh, one more one thing is there which you can do is oh that didn't come to my mind earlier one thing that you can do is you can put it in filter and you can use a wild card and you can use starts with s yeah and then i guess you will do that you can do that uh, and with a condition even so but over here as we are doing a calculated field and a more sustainable form of thing so let's uh, so what we will do is we know that we will be modifying customer name so what we will do is we will create a calculated field on customer name so right click on customer name create calculated field now we see that customer name automatically comes up <coughs> what is our criteria that names that starts with s correct now let's see what do we have as a formula so we do see that we have a formula called starts with correct so let me use this formula starts with and let me copy this and paste it over here customer name now what is the substring that i need to see it is telling me uh, starts with customer name it starts with like you know whatever name it will fetch from there and then it is asking for a substring the substring is how it will like you know what will it fetch from this co column that you are telling so you need to define the the start uh, starting letter say s okay then then you apply and okay now oh shoot i didn't name this as well this one was also one ah oh, this one so now that you have the calculation ready with you now you know that okay if i do this now 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 what will happen after doing this kind of a calculation nothing but a boolean value will come once you put this into the filters okay so if you put it into filters what will happen is a boolean value pop up comes up as an aggregation why because we have told them that if it is s then let us know so once that are s this guy has referred to it as true and once that are non s uh, it has referred to it as false okay now if i put calculation 1 in filters and then select true and apply what i'll see all the ones with the letter s comes up over here so that's how that's how uh, you know you basically uh, put this calculation over here and once you use the true thing what happens is all the names with s comes up okay so boolean uh, so uh, you know that's that's how you do a string calculation now let's do a date calculation maybe or uh, let's do a logical calculation then we'll look at a date calculation so now say suppose your manager comes to you and says that you know what can you please do a graph or a visual and tell me or highlight all the sub categories that are having a sale more than 1 lakh so what will you do you will have sub category and you will have sales and what has he told you that if sales is more than 1 lakh then it is high so do highlight it over here uh, else low okay now you know that you know this is your this is your sub categories and that's your sales figures now you need to highlight it so what will you do again you will go and write a calculate go to this right click calculated field and over here what will you do is you will write the say suppose it name it as sales target and the formula being uh so we will use as we are using logical functions so what we will do let me just remove this
So let me go over here. Do I have a if? We do have a if, right? So if, what is my first function that is there? This sum of seals. Always remember whenever you are using a measure in your formula, you have to use an aggregation. If you don't use an aggregation before it, you will get errors. Okay. So if sum of sales is greater than 1 lakh, so then what do you do is you have to highlight it. So how will you highlight? You will say, suppose, write it as high. Okay. Else low. And always the logical, whenever you are writing a logical if else, it always ends with an end. Once you do that, you will see that the calculation is valid. So now you can apply. Okay. And you see something called sales target has come up in your fields over here. Now what do you do? You pull this sales target into your colors and you can see that we have a high and low populated over here whereby everything that is more than 1 lakh see all these bars are more than 1 lakh okay are highlight like you know the ones which are uh, highlighted they're in blue and the ones which are below 1 lakh those things have come in green okay and then you can you know if you want to use your labels then you can go ahead and you can show your labels from here and this is your label appearance like if you want to you know use it uh, you can show it up. okay so that's how that's how a logical condition works whereby uh, whereby you are showing that you know what is what is it that is um, that is affecting you know these 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 things and uh, what is it that is affecting uh, you know the low and highs and you can you can venture out with there are so many formulas in there and what whenever you get a requirement whenever you get a chance uh, you know do look into it and you can see uh, what all formulas are there and you can explore it on the visuals so that's about logical conditions uh next comes the two important things which are called grand totals uh grand totals and subtotals here uh which are called quick table calculations and table calculations so whatever doesn't come in your calculated field like whatever doesn't come in quick table calculations come in your calculations now what are quick table calculations quick table calculations are calculated fields where we apply calculation at a data set level okay not at a dimension level or anything but we have it as a uh, as default calculations that are applied at a data set level uh, it applies to the entire table and it depends on the table structure as well um, so these are these are inbuilt functions where you don't need to write any formulas and you can uh, you know, slice the slice the things and compute, and you can compute the entire range of the specified table structure. So, so let's see how quick table calculations can be used. The other day I tried showing quick table calculations, but then I realized that no, uh, let's take it up with the other calculations. So uh, now this time again, let me have set date. So let me pull order my uh, order date to my columns. And then let me pull my sales to my rows. Okay. Now I have this value. Now let's do something. Let me. Now let me, uh, you know, pull another sales thing over here. Okay. Now, now, now quick table calculations come up with many things. Now let's see how it works. Now this one, this sales that I brought, I why did I bring it? Because I want to do some form of a calculation over here. So, oh, so just go over there, put a right click, and you will see an option called Quick Table Calculations. Now, if you if you 
see your goal like you know whatever your metric goal is whatever your calculation goal is you can go over here and do it so let's see how it works first is running total so running total is nothing but cumulative total and let's see what happens if i click it <laughs> So, uh, so what happens in cumulative? Cumulative basically is, uh, you know, your first bar, whatever the value is, whenever you're doing a cumulative or a running total gets added to the second and that value gets added up to the, like, you know, third and then that value gets added up to your fourth. So you will always find whenever you're doing a running total uh, that the first value will only match because from after that uh, it is aggregating the values and it is doing a plus 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 till the end of it uh, to show you what is the running total between these years but you know uh, sales will be like this is basically 2019 sales 20 sales 21 sales 22 sales and you know addition of everything happens whenever you're doing a, a cumulative calculation and you will see that you know, this is some kind of figure that will come up. That is like, you know, running total of sales uh, along the along the table and you get this value. Any doubts clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, can we put it over here? Now, let's look at it. That the next thing. Let me pull sales again. Let me do a right click. And now what I'll do is quick table calculations difference. Okay. Let me see it as a table. <sighs> Let me pull it up here. So now, what is this difference? Uh... Now, difference in sales from previous year along the along year of order date. So, if you want to, if you want to understand what is happening, it's basically calculating the difference between sales uh, along the years so uh, 2019 will always be a blank because we don't have a 2018 data so what do we have we have 2020 car data and what is happening this is getting uh, rather this is getting subtracted from this and the value comes up same way man, these are coming up okay that is difference along the uh, along the line um next let me drag in sales again. Let me go to quick table calculations and let me do a percentage difference. Okay. Now let me put this guy over here. And what do we find? We find percentage difference in sales from previous year along the year of date. What is the difference in sales between all these years? Okay. Again, let me pull it. Go to quick table. And let's say I want to do a rank. Or no, uh, let me do a percent of total. Now, percentage of total. Yeah. So what percentage does... 2019 values of sales comprise among the entire pool of data that we have so likewise what you can do is i'm not taking you through everything likewise what you can do is you can go and explore the quick table calculations and if uh, it is something that you know where you get things that oh okay this is already present in here let me do it you don't need to write a function alex like you know separately you don't need to write a function 
and you can use this. Uh, so whatever you don't find in quick table calculations, you can very well go to the calculated field and you can write the functions over there. The next thing that we will talk of is table calculations. It is pretty, pretty similar to quick table calculations. That's called a table calculation whereby we pull our year to columns, sales to rows. Now on sales, let me do a right click. And what we saw quick table calculations. Now let's add a table calculation, add table calculation. And what do we find in here? We find that, uh, you know, a drop down kind of coming up functions. Uh, so a drop down a type coming up, which talks, which is named as calculation type. And then comes compute using a table across sale, cell or specific dimensions. Okay. And it is always relative to previous, next, first, last, etc. So first let us select over here. Like if you want to, uh, you know, use a, a table calculation. So what you did, always remember, right click on the measure and then you do this, um, you know, do this table calculation, click on the table. Let's do a running total. Okay. And um, when we select running total, what happens is, uh, you know, running total, let's select an average over here. Okay. And uh, what happens uh, when we do that? So when we, when we have this, let's do an average over here. Now you have one more option, which tells you run along or uh, like you know or, or or however we want to like you know run across so when we tell run along or across and so we can do the calculation downwards or sideways over here we have the data sideways so we will do a table across over here so how i want my calculation so here we have it so now what we will do is Now we see that that's a running average of the running total average of the of the entire data that we see. So this is basically how you do the table calculations. So in table calculations as well, you have uh, you know various various different types of things which you can also uh, use. So say suppose you have sales over here. So if you use a difference from so you will see like, you know, 20 to 22, you have this difference and then you have this and then you have this. So likewise, you can uh, explore the table calculations as well. And you can check what is happening and what is not happening. Okay, so that's that's about this. Now let's look at a scenario for a company an increase in its market share frequently translates into a higher profit margin to ensure her company's sustainability. Jennifer, the sales manager needs to identify growth opportunities for business and how to make the most of them. Hence, she needs to determine and study the sales variance for year over year growth based on a quarterly breakdown. Simple, no? Sales variance we need to have had a quarterly breakdown. So let's let's do it. So what does Jennifer want for herself? She wants to determine the sales variance year over year growth based on the quarterly breakdown, right? So what will we do? What is the first thing that will we do? We need to see a trend in sales first. So that typically tells us that we need a line graph to see because line graph is like you know predominantly used to see a trend it is also called a trend line graph right you will see people calling it as trend line graphs so line graph is basically used to uh, see trends um, 
Anyone who can guess what do we use to show share of something? Which graph do we use to show share of something? So what will you do? Uh, we have to do a time-based analysis. What are my requirements? Let me go over here. So Jennifer wants to see like, you know, year on year. So it's a time-based analysis that we need to do. Uh, we need to drill down at quarterly level. And because we want to know the difference or variance for Y O Y, we need to use a difference between them. Correct. So as we need year, so what we will do is we will first take year and put it to the columns and then sales to rows. I have this line chart coming up. Okay, now I need to go at a quarterly level. Who will tell me how do I go to quarterly level? We have discussed this. That's fine, but then uh, you can take ex help of drill down as well. We have seen drill down. This plus, if I do, I get the quarters, right? So what happened? Uh, so Jennifer, want, what she wanted, she wanted to have the uh, data at a quarterly level. We are good with quarterly level. Now, now, what is the next thing that we need to do? We need to do a percentage difference. So what will we do? We will take another sales, put it over here, right click, and where will we go? To quick table calculations. And from there, what will we do? We will do a percent difference, okay? Now, when we do that, these graphs look like a, like what do you call them? <laughs> Like all the crooked sticks together, you know, stuck in a in a particular view, and it looks very messy, right? So what will we do? What what is the what is another level of representation that we can do? We will take this sales thing, the sales pill, and let me put it to colors. Okay. Now when I put it to colors. This now makes a bit of sense as to us. Why? Because what we have done, we have done percentage of difference and now that it was looking as messy. So what did we do? We have changed the color. So the more red it is, that does mean that it is positive in sales and the lighter it is, it does mean that it is at a negative, right? So this is that negative and the the redder it is, that does mean that uh, the things are like this. Now, if you have, uh, like, you know, if you go to the, uh, if you hover up to the graph, you can see what is happening and what is not. So from here, if you start moving up, so you will see this difference of thing. And when you reach over here, you will see some. So here, when you were at quarter one of 2020, if you see the number percentage of difference in sales across, you will see minus and then this you travel the entire way up and you're almost there at Q2. Now you see a positive number coming up and then like, you know, again, travel in the quarter three, your number was over here and then this. So this basically tells Jennifer what it is telling Jennifer firstly, uh, quarterly wise, how my sales figures were and what is the trend because the, the redder it is, the more positive your things are. And also it is giving you the journey between the quarters along the years for this particular thing represented by gradient coloring. So this becomes pretty easy for her to know that, you know, what is happening and how should I deal with it. Okay. Now look at another very, very strategic visualization that is called box plots. Box plots are very, very important. You know, Bob, why I'm telling you, if you guys are anyone who is working, if you guys are working on data science or if you have any interest towards data science, box plot is one of the important um, visual that comes into play while you're venturing towards, you know, reporting marketing may box plots people avoid because Firstly, people don't understand box plots. I'm very sorry, but 
uh, you know, unless people are taught to see this block, box plot visual, because box plot is a very tactical visual, and uh, you know, I love that visual. I'll say because a single box plot gives you the minimum value, maximum value, and interquartile values. Uh, firstly, interquartile, then it gives you median, and then it gives you minimum and maximum. So one box plot always has five. a uh, different thing in a single box let's see how box plot works and box plot is basically used to show distributions and compare sets of data which is highlighted uh, up to the five key values of minimum 25% quartile median 75% quartile and maximum so seeing the uh, distribution of values along the axis and uh, whenever you are working with data science or data Uh, you will see that box plot comes very handy because you have uh, in a single view you have your entire entire thing which you can draw inferences from um, let's take a quick example and we will wrap up the session with box plots today because um that will be very hard to grasp and i'll urge you to go and i don't know if you have, guys have a license of tableau but then Uh, always free versions are available for 14 days or so but then you know go and practice go and practice at least practice box plots and learn box plots it is very important in marketing reporting and but in data science yes so let me pull in you know some of the parameters let me pull in say no, what do I, are you using the trial license or you have license no yeah i am using a free license so let me pull in segment let me pull in region and let me pull in discount okay uh, one more thing is always have your like you know if you have your show me thing on what will happen you know you will see that as soon as you are uh, start putting uh, the things it will give you suggested suggested graph see i put segment only the table comes up Let me pull in the, region. One more doubt in the region of visualization. You show me. You can see third last one, right? In the second round, last. I didn't understand you. What? In show me, me there's there's a graph uh, in uh, second row, last one. Second row, last one. Last last section. This one. No, a a more row, last one. Which I, one? Above bubble chart. This one. No, no, no. Uh, last above bubble chart, right? There is a wine cellar. Uh, we will call that wine cellar. Looks like candle uh, graph, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, box and wine. So, uh, can you explain why this graph I haven't used anywhere? But uh, what's the uh, like uh, usage of that graph? You're talking of this one, box yeah. and whisker plot. Yeah, yeah. that is the graph i'm talking of correct right now okay <laughs> <laughs> that is called a box plot right so box and whisker plots yeah that is what i'm discussing that is what i'm trying to explain you okay wait okay. hold on fasten your seat belts wait so now let me pull in discount over here okay now why box now now see Uh, as soon as i have two parameters coming into play and then one measurement to support those two parameters see box plot gets um, gets activated first thing you need to have two or more dimensions in order to uh, you know uh, qualify for a box plotting uh, box plotting thing you, you cannot box plot with a like you know if you do this that, that doesn't make sense doesn't make much sense but always it has to be two or more dimensions qualifying uh this uh, this thing this box plotting now let's see why and what happens over there now now what happens like whenever you pull in this scenario you will see that one bar graph will come up now from show me let's go to box plot okay 
now what we see is an interquartile range in the box plot now if you go over here what you will see you will see something called the upper whisker then comes upper quartile which is called as an upper hinge and then comes your median then comes your lower quartile and then comes your lower whisker so that's the five things that we were talking of so when you when we are talking about this so basically uh, you know lower whisker is minimum then comes your 25% quartile then comes your median then comes your 75% and the upper whisker is nothing but it is your um, it is your upper range or the or the higher range so okay so what happens is this basically shows you the quartiles and everything uh, and and all the uh, all the things that comes between upper whisker and lower whisker and it shows you the distribution of data along the line so it shows you that for consumer as a segment you know distribution happens like this but where did region go as soon as we have selected box plot what happens is it shows this distribution from the per se of a region it is showing the distribution of segment right it is showing the distribution of segment but on what parameter the parameter being region on a parameter of region what is the distribution of segment that is happening that's why you always need two or more dimensions because it is showing you a distribution and distribution always comes up with uh, you know distribution always comes up with parameters of parameter which is needed along with there cannot be a single thing you may plot it doesn't make sense so what is it showing you it is showing you distribution of segment based on the parameter of region correct now you see that region is helping it to have a distribution now if i now pull back region originally like you know region was not in max this is called max cut region originally was not in max cut right but it was from the columns correct now let me again pull it back to columns what we see now it shows us like um now it shows us individual marks in a plot that it should but but that's not how it should be now if i go over here i don't see the plotting happening correct now we see that individual marks are plot that it is not plotting a distribution that it should okay clear till now we see a flattened horizontal line box right and we are getting single marks but we want a distribution correct but so as the definition says box plot is meant to show the distribution of data so now what we will do we will now go ahead and disaggregate values why because now when we supply region back in there we want this view me we want this view to show up my box plot but what is happening is while i am doing the segment and region i am putting it back in their respective things it is not showing me the entire thing why because this metric is getting aggregated based on these two things so what we will do we have to disaggregate our measures so how do you do that we need to go to analysis and you will see aggregate measures from there you need to just click this and this will disaggregate all your measures so now what happens in this this view itself i have my plottings happening at upper whisker upper hinge median lower hinge and lower whisker right to have a to have a like you know much more informative view what do we do we oh no not this this what do we do we pull in uh, like you know we just rotated the graph and we what do we see we swap the axis to have a horizontal view okay now that we see that you know based on my region and based on my segment 
how is the thing plotted how are things plotted and how do we uh, see this and how do we how how can we take any of the inferences from it so you know you can go ahead and you can change you know everything you can format and stuff you can do over here but that is not the thing inferences what is my inference inferences discount is pretty much same for all the segments that we have because see all the medians are coming in here and what is the other thing that central region is showing the highest range the region central has gone beyond the 75 percent whisker and it is it, its upper limit is is distributed over here and this is this is how we can infer that central region is showing the higher range um, you know discount is same for all the segments and um, you know we can see the minimum and maximum values of the interquartile range and we can determine determine for each region what is the what is the you know distribution of discount from the lower level to the higher level 